What's going on everyone? It's Two, and today we'll continue our full character series, and today I'll share my method for creating hair. I know a lot of people are also requesting the feet and export method, so stay tuned for those. They will also be added to the playlist soon, and in this video we're going to be going over how to construct hair, including how to create the hair strands, and including how to create a composition of hair, texturing, and even modifying the normals of your hair. So first we'll be starting with a pretty important part of the hair anatomy, which is the hair base or the hair net and what this will do is establish the edges of hair especially the hairline the sideburns the back of the head etc this is pretty mandatory for characters with short hair but i do it for every character because it's just good practice and it also prevents like if there is any gaps in the hair it prevents them from seeing like the bald head underneath and we can easily create this by going over to our head mesh and just selecting all of the areas that uh hair will grow so here the mirror modifier is already applied, but uh, in any case, we'll just turn on X-Ray and make sure we select the exact same thing on both sides. And we'll just make sure mirroring is on when we tab over its edit mode. So let's select the top of the head, the sideburns, the neck up to this area, around the ear. Yeah, that should be fine. Let's just make sure the other side is the same. Okay, now we can Shift D and this will duplicate what we just selected and we will separate that right click separate selection and we'll create this new mesh to access that we have to go back into object mode make sure it's selected let's rename it to while we're at it while we're here let's delete all these materials and this is the hair material that i'm using you can pause and quickly copy this node setup if you want now that we're here uh in edit mode let's scale it up a bit so it doesn't clip just a tad amount you can simply go here and where it says mirror let's just smear it along the y and then we can just take the edges and curve them where they uh, need to be curved in and this is a super lazy method but let's just curve it around the ear the sideburns and the neck area then it's also good practice to um, get these as close to the mesh as possible to the head mesh just make sure it doesn't clip anyways once that's complete we can start working on our individual strands or tufts of hair. So we'll need to create two curves. Let's shift A and add a circle curve. Take it down, put it off to the side and shift A, path curve. And the circle curve will be the shape of your hair. And honestly, all you need to do in edit mode is take this point move it up like this and there you go that's the shape of your hair and for your path curve you'll need to go to this green tab um, under bevel object let's take the dropper and just quickly select the circle tool uh, circle mesh circle curve let's rotate this into place so we'll be starting uh, from the front and let's just make sure that curve is in relation like that. This hair material, and this will be your strand of hair. When you're working with hair strands in edit mode, uh, with curves rather, there's a couple of things that you need to know. First is Alt S. See, normal scaling with S won't work. You have to use Alt S, which, which is uh, shrink or fatten. And let's just shrink the end like that and fatten the other segments as necessary, as needed. Another tool is Control T and then rotating it to twist the hair. I'm not going to be twisting any hair, but in case you wanted to create any curls, that's how you would do it. Control T. But uh, I want to quickly show you something important in wire viewport. You see, this is how it will look like when we convert it from a curve into a mesh. And it has a lot of faces, so that's not good. We want to lessen this amount of polygons. And the way we do that is each curve has this property under object data properties called uh, resolution preview U. And my recommended setting is three. So once you toggle this for your circle curve, that will deal with the vertical um, lines. And then the path curve itself, you set it to three. That will deal with the horizontal lines. That's a good place to start three because it will keep its shape for the most part, but at the same time, it lowers the amount of faces drastically. You can make that as high or as low as you want for your needs. Now we can shape the hair as desired. 
And for any hair that will be symmetrical, you can apply a mirror modifier. So that will be around there. Another important thing to note is that you can use E to extrude and you can even select two points and subdivide between them. But an important thing you wanna do is make sure that each root of hair strand ends inside the hair mesh so that you can hide all those ugly parts of the hair strand and that is going towards the middle of the head because that's just how hair works. So here I'm just making sure that it goes into the hair and it goes into the middle. So it makes sense. Like it will just go along this line. Then it will go like that at the back. One thing you should also probably do is set the origin close to somewhere near the root of your hair. So that way when you duplicate this, we'll just be uh, duplicating this a lot. And then you can easily rotate it. That's how I usually do it. I start with the front and then I just start duplicating it uh, towards the sides and the back. So this is just a quick example, but just duplicating it, making sure it's looking okay from the top, rotating it to follow the shape of the head as we reach the back. And we'll just make sure it's filled in and as you're doing this, it's good to also check the general general shape from the top. Like this circle shape. Like you may see certain strands that are just sticking out too much. And, and obviously you just move those in line so that it keeps that circular shape from the top. That is if you want things to look nice and neat. And again, notice where the hair originates from. And it's just following that direction. So after a while, this is what it ended up looking like, kind of going for like a Captain Levi style. It's 90% like symmetrical, not all hairstyles will be like this. Here at the back, we close it off with one single strand so that it uh, so that it doesn't look too weird. Here's a contrasting example where there are like symmetrical, symmetrical parts, but obviously you have those individual strands that break up that symmetry so it doesn't look too perfect. Even here in the back, like, the sides are symmetrical, but you have these strands going on where it breaks that up. And you know, some clipping is fine. In some cases, it really can be avoided, but um, to prevent it from looking too sloppy, as you can see, we've layered the hair. Some strands go over, some strands go under. Just avoid them going in all at the same places and at the same levels or else there will be a lot of clipping. Now we can move on to the next step, which is unwrapping and texturing the hair. So to prepare for this, we can now select all of our hair strands and we can convert them to mesh. Let's also press control A and apply all the transforms. Oh, one thing we should also do is check for the hair orientation. Let's select all of the hair, tab over to edit mode over here in viewport overlays the drop down menu let's click face orientation and we'll see it's different orientations the hair is red the face is blue we can't have that let's select all with a and then do mesh normals recalculate outside and if that doesn't make them the same color you can try the other one recalculate inside or flip the recalculate outside works just fine for this we can turn off face orientation now we can select one of the hair strands. So I'll start with the front. So what I'm going to do is select these edges by doing shift alt left click and selecting all of the areas where it separates the front of the hair from the back of the hair. I have mark seam in my favorites. You can just go to edge mark seam and click assign to quick favorites. And I will do that for pretty much every hair strand. And one thing, if you've noticed, uh, it will be one, two, there, there will be four faces in between these seams. If you also follow the long and did three for your resolution preview. But for the most part, it should be easy to see where those seams are. Anyways, let's just pretend that we have marked all of those seams. Over in shading, we're actually going to blow up our image texture for now. Actually, let's just unlink the material output and create an image texture. Shift A, image texture. Plug the color into our material output. Let's create a new image texture.
I'll air. Just hit OK for now. Let me just grab the color of the hair here. I'll copy the value. And then I will head over to Texture Paint. Fill it in with that color. Let's save this image. Now we can go over into UV Editing tab. Press A to select all. Press A here to unwrap. So here I can't tell which is the front and which is the back. And I can easily solve that by, well, let's go into the shading. Let's grab this color. Let's grab this hex. Back over to texture paint. Paste that. Just create this little square right here. Build with that color. Now in UV editing, and like press Control L. Bring it over there, and if the back um, goes into this color, becomes that color, then we know it's the back. So for those that are doing unlit textures, you can just toss them in there. See how this one um, fills up the front? You have to keep that. That one fills up the back. So you can just leave that there. As for these ones, I'll just make sure they're both facing the same orientation that the bottom of the, the, the tip of the hair is facing down. Then I'm going to alt left click and do a line X. And I'm going to do that for every loop. Then from top to bottom, same thing, but a line Y. And this part again is very tedious, but it makes it a lot easier when we're doing the texture painting. Now they're the same size and they're all neatly squared up. Put them over here in this corner. Now we can just paint them as we desire. So as a quick example, I'm just going to take a lighter hue, go on the side like that, go back to the original, make it a little darker, go like that. And notice these are the same size, right? So, so you have two options here. You can just leave that in the same spot and then paint over it again. So both of those islands have different paintings, or you can just stack them on top of each other and they'll have the same texture. And so if we wanted to stack it right on top, we can just mirror it on the X, drag it over, or you could have just done this from the start, but it will just mirror all the things that you did on that other side. I think most people will do unlit, but if you wanted to do something with shadows, all you need to do is plug this into the base color instead. Then plug the color back into the surface. And even reuse the same texture area for different hair strands. So here will be how we stack it up. Now that they're stacked up, you can move them over here to the side, put the first one and create a new texture here, or you could even just stack it on top of the first one and it will be the same. Mirror X if it's not the right way. And yeah. If this happens, like stuff like that, when you're uh, texturing your other strands, it's just because they're overlapping. But once you unwrap all of the other hairs too, then it will be fixed. Now let's just pretend we finished the entire texture. What's next would be editing the normals if you wish to do so. I wish I could give you more specific tips on how to actually paint good looking hair, but that's something I'm learning myself right now. So unfortunately we'll just move on to the next thing. Though this part is only if you don't like the default shading that comes with your hair. Like this is, it's a little, it does look kind of cool, but it's also a little complicated. Like there's too much going on. 
And for that, I would suggest if you want something simpler, just a, a spherical shading for your hair. So how would we accomplish that? First thing you would do is of course, let's join all of our hair now. We're just pretending it's already textured. Now all of our hair is in one mesh. Let's, um, let's hide everything except the hair for now. And in object mode, let's shift A, add a sphere. Under this orange tab, let's just display it as a wire. Scale it so that's around and it fits the hair just like uh, right inside it. Let's try to get it as close as we can, even on the sides. Scale it down as needed. And let's say that your character has longer hair. You can just take this part, grab it down like that until it covers the length of your character's hair. Then you can just subdivide along this part. But this part will do. For our sphere, we want to add a modifier. Subdivision surface. And when we're doing a, a normal transfer method, we want the normals that we're copying from to be as circular as possible by cranking up the subdivision as high as we can. For my comp, it uh, stops out at 6'6", six, six, that's fine. And for our hair, we also add a modifier data transfer. Source is of course the sphere that we made. For our hair, we, may, we have to make sure custom normals are on. It's just in the green tab, normals auto smooth. You have to turn that on or else we won't see the changes. Mapping will be nearest corner and best matching face normal. And we'll just apply that. Then we can delete the sphere. Now you might not see what's going on right away. But once we play with the light source, we can see that it's a lot simpler. The shading is a lot simpler because it's just act. It's just shading it as if it were a sphere now. This is without spherical normals, and this is with spherical normals. So it's up to you which look that you like better. We go into the solid viewport, we can see what's going on. That doesn't look too bad once the solidify outlines are in. Anyways, the same process was used for this female model, and you might be wondering how we got this circular shape instead. And all that is, is instead of joining the hair strands inside the head, like going in that kind of way. We just join them up at the top like so, and you make sure they're hidden. These are the mirrored strands, and they just all join up here at the center, which creates that circular look. You just have to make sure that, uh, you know, you tuck everything in here so that nothing's sticking out. This one is also using the transferred sphere normals, which again, you might like for the more simple and cell shaded styles. Anyways, that's my full workflow for creating hair. And next bit in this series, we'll be going back to our OG model that we started with. And I'll show you how I prepared this model for export. And specifically, it'll be an export to Unity. But the same steps will apply for other engines as well. Now, I know a lot of people are also requesting the tutorial on feet. So don't worry, that's on the list as well. But that's going to be it for now. Like the video if it helped. Consider subbing if you want to see more instructional videos. And I'm out. Peace.